If something triggers you, it's most likely because you've put up armor rather than facing the truth. Like, at the same way of like, don't look at me. Like, honestly, man, you do not want any of this. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know who you think you are, but it's not this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. Today, for episode number 487, we are going to ask you a simple question as Alan makes his microphone fart. <laughs> what armor are you wearing? Does the title make sense? I don't know, but we're going to tell you what that actually means. So normally what we do is provide some context, and we're going to do that. We're going to do that first. And I apologize about the microphone farting. Uh, that's when I move my mic. It makes a weird noise. Make it do it again. Because if, you, okay, if it doesn't do it again, it's not you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's that noise. You know how in school you'd like make your, sh you'd be like, no, that was my shoe. That was People my would chair. Like, we'll do it again then. Because if, if it, you can't do it again, you definitely fart you, it. <laughs> and you can never do it again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Enough about my past trauma. So to provide context about what is your armor or what armor are you wearing, what do we mean by armor? I think that... Okay, everyone's probably heard that quote of the walls we build to protect ourselves from the bad guys also keep out the good ones. And I think that that's a fire quote, but I think that it's incomplete. The walls you build to protect yourself not only keeps out the bad guys, but it also keeps out the good things. And what I mean by that is that armor is ego. It's fear. It's limiting beliefs. It's it's you keeping other people at a distance, which is stopping you from networking. It's stopping you from connecting. It's stopping you from love and from flourishing. It's almost like that's a place you're not willing to go to within yourself. And I, I honestly think that the more inner work you do, the more outer expansion you can do in your life. Mm. I told you I was bawling my eyes out today when I was doing breath work. Perfect. So the reason that we decided to do this episode is because of a story. So as you know, if you follow me at Never Quit Kid on Instagram, every morning I'm at the gym, usually 5, 5.30. I usually try to get there by 5. But there is this man that, that is at the gym. And for those gym goers, specifically men, I don't know that women really ego up when they're in the gym. I'm a different human being when I'm in the gym. Mm. I'm definitely, speaking of savage, we talked about that last Friday, I'm a savage in the gym. I, head down, now I have my mask on, like all you can see is my eyes, I have my hood on, I have my hat on, I have my big headphones on, I'm there for one reason and one reason only, I'm there to work, that's, my, that's why I'm there, I'm not there for anything else. And I always see this guy, and he's, he's a skinnier guy, uh, like 40, and he walks around, you know, like his poop don't stink. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do that in the gym, a lot yeah. of people do that in the gym. But I noticed that like I was getting some looks from him, and he walked like his poop didn't stink a little bit more around me. And in my mind, it's like, okay, like, come on, this guy, maybe he's a little bit of a, you know, maybe this guy's a little bit of a dick. That, mm -hmm. that was my thought. Maybe he's a little bit of a dick. And I've seen him in there a lot, and he's, like, eyed me a lot. And it's like, okay, well, whatever. It is what it is. And I try to put it out of my mind. But again, like, I'm very, it's fight or flight mode. I'm in fight mode. I'm lifting heavy weight. I have, you know, angry music playing. Like, I'm in the, the zone of, like, look, man, it's, if it's me or you, it's going to be, it's going to be me. That's, <laughs> that's what's going to happen here. So the other day I'm lifting and he comes up to me and I'm like, all right, here we go. And he says, hey man, can I ask you a question? And I was like, yeah, of course, what's up? Do you lift one body, body part a day? Like how do you lift, blah, blah, blah. You look really good. Like you look awesome, man. Oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. So in this moment, and th this is all like in real time. I'm like, this is going to make an awesome pod podcast episode. It's a great story. He ha that's his armor. His right. armor is walking around like his crap doesn't stink because he probably wants to project strength on people. Right. He was either intimidated, impressed, attracted, not in a sexual manner, but attracted from the aspect of like, well, I, I kind of want to say something to this guy. And maybe he wasn't humble enough to put that away. Mm -hmm. But he found the humility. He found the courage to come up to me and talk to me. We ended up having a great conversation. He talked to me again later during the workout. We talked about his calories and his macronutrients and all that stuff. But I also had my armor up. Like, it's the same way of, like, don't look at me. Like, honestly, man, you do not want any of this. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know who you think you are, but it's not this. Same thing, ego, right? right? It's a very egotistical place. Right. My question to you is what armor are you wearing in your life, in your relationship, right? Like, some armor is founded. If you're a young lady and you go out to the bar, I'm sure you get hit on a lot by disrespectful people. Right. And you probably have some form of armor. Maybe it's 
you just have a smug look or whatever it is. I don't know, right? But that armor might be founded. But what armor are you wearing that you could do without? Right. That guy dropped his armor to talk to me. Now, every time I see him, it's going to be a different experience. Completely, It's a completely different gym session now. Right. When I see him, I'll give him a pound mm. versus challenging him to a fight to the death. You know, I think that... Uh I think we all have different armor. What do you think is yours? What do you, what do you think was the armor you put on? For that? Yeah. Superiority? Toughness? Right. Intimidation? I think there's internal confidence and then there's projecting confidence that isn't real. I think internal confidence, and I, I watched a video recently that talked about if you're externally um, reactive. So people that are really internally confident, you'll notice that not a lot phases them. Mm. It's like... If you ever look at like a basketball all-star watching an NBA game, like there's a lot on the line. This is a championship game and they're the all-star player. They're not really, they don't seem that phased. I remember watching um, a football game with the Patriots down 28 to three in the halftime and Tom Brady seems... This is the the Super Bowl. Yeah, the Super Bowl. Bowl. Exactly. And, and, you know, they've worked hard all season to get to this point and Tom Brady didn't seem that phased. I think that's the sign of really, really good self-development, really good internal confidence. Like, they won that game, yep. which was, like, not biggest statistically. Comeback. Biggest yeah. yeah, never happened statistically before. But I do notice that, and I believe this to be true, someone's hyper-reactivity to external stimuli is their own lack of internal personal development. And we've all been in an unresourceful state. I have that, that simple acronym of HALT, H-H-A-L-L-T, hungry, horny, angry, lonely, late, or tired. If you're any three of those, you are Jeffin, and you got to go get center, go find center, meditate, breath work, whatever. But if you picture you in a really unresourceful state, a really fearful, anxious state, you're most likely very like hyper-reactive. Yeah. You're in a fight-or-flight mode. Some people, it takes a lot more to trigger that than others. I remember when I first went to watch Tony Robbins. It's actually funny. This is full circle. I saw Tom Brady and Edelman speak, uh, not speak, but get interviewed by Tony Robbins. It was the first time. Thank you, brother. It was the first time I'd ever seen Tony Robbins speak. And I remember I was going with Andrew at the time, Andrew Copeland, and he basically said, I wonder what makes Tony Robbins scared. Mm -hmm. Like, what triggers his fight-or-flight response? The universe provided. Some guy behind us, when Tony was, like, doing the high fives across the the aisles to everybody, ran out from behind me, jumped on Tony. Literally jumped on him while in the middle of his sprint. Now, Tony's not old, but he's not young. He's He was 58 at the time, I think, because now he's 60. And he got scared. And me and Andrew talked about it later of like, wow, we wanted to know what scares Tony Robbins. He, he literally, he like, literally looked, like put him down and said, like, what are you doing, man? And like the security got him and, and like t- took him away. But like, we got to literally witness Tony Robbins scared. You have a 180 pound dude run and jump on you like a three year old in the middle of a sprint. It's like, you could pull your back, like... He can't afford to get injured by some random stranger jumping I was on inspired. him. Yeah, the, inspired. Yeah, the suit way yeah, over overzealous. And afterwards, he was actually still behind me, and he was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I did that." It was almost like he was in a trance or something. But anyways, um, where was I going with that? I think you have to understand what triggers you. You have to understand what you're afraid of in advance, and then I think that you can purposely develop that inner security by becoming really good at it. And I'll end on this because I went on a crazy tangent. (laughs) But seriously, Uh, if you get triggered by money, it's most likely because on some level you're not confident with money. Makes sense. Whereas I remember when I had $150,000 in my bank account, I money was it didn't affect me. It didn't bother me. I wasn't scared of any. Like I literally went to the casino with three grand and I said I could lose this and it wouldn't matter. And I know you know that feeling too when you have more than enough coming in. If something triggers you, it's most likely because you've put up armor rather than facing the truth. Mm. And that's what I would say. Yeah, it's interesting because we all have it. Yeah. We all have it. And this is an interesting, it's a good example because at the gym, I'm a different person. Mm. Like I am. I'm just, you, we, we, you and I go to the gym, it's very much like, look, we're here to yeah. We're here to, to do things. And your testosterone's higher. And it's just, I got music on. It was a very interesting thing for me because I realized very quickly that maybe everybody that looks at me thinks that. Maybe every, when people, I, people watch me hit the bag, right? Maybe my assumption is they think, oh God, what an idiot or whatever, Maybe the assumption is like, well, I'm actually inspired by that. Or I'm motivated by that. Or, right? Right? Like, 
it's it's this interesting thing. But we all have that armor. I challenge you to take down that armor as long as it's safe. Right? As put long your, as it's safe. Put yourself in a safe place and you never know what might happen. That who knows what could happen. That could be my friend now. I see him every day at the gym. Like him and I could be we could become friends. If I was a personal trainer, he asked me for fitness advice. I could mm. get him as a client. Right. Right? All because we both put down our armor at the same time and connected. And connected. Uh, if I know we got to go, but I want to say one thing. Kev, you coach, I coach. I'm almost always looking for the other person's armor. Mm. Emilia and I were in a relationship talks this this past weekend uh, with one of my other clients, and she was willing to, not Emilia, but the other person, was willing to get really vulnerable. But first there was a protector that came up. I could tell she was about to get emotional, and I said, listen, are you willing to identify what that protector was? What was that armor that just came up right before you we're going to get emotional. You either go vulnerable or you put the armor up. And you and I interview people. We can tell, like, oh yeah, you can tell when they sidestep the question because they don't want to go there. If you're out there right now, you have armor. You have to identify what it is and why it's there if you want to overcome it. And I've seen, that's what breathwork does. It, it crying heals. Yeah. And no, you don't need the armor anymore. You're, like, healing from it. And not avoiding it. So. I, I, then the great example of that, the breath work, it comes full circle. And this is amazing. I actually had the opportunity to coach somebody to help them become more emotional, which I never thought that was going to be a thing. But one of the questions I asked this young man was, okay, I mentioned doing breath work. We talked about that. What happens when you do it? And he said, well, I get a little emotional, but it's not like I don't really cry or anything. I said, why? What's stopping you? When you have that thought and you feel that wallowing up of tears, what is your conditioning? Like, oh, you know, big boys don't cry. Right? We don't cry around here. Rub a little dirt on it. That's your, that's your shield. That's your armor that's you're putting your armor. on. Because I know for me, it's a conscious thing of like, okay, let it go. Just let it go. You're fine. You're safe. You're safe. You don't have to worry. Like You can cry. You can cry. It's not a big deal. Right. Armor comes up. So that's a good example of it. If you haven't done the Samantha Skelly breath work, I don't remember what episode it is, just Google, uh, go on YouTube and type in uh, Samantha Skelly hyperconscious. It'll come up. Yeah. Episode 402. 402, perfect. Literally, 23 people in the room, 22, 21, 20 people were crying. Right. We all let it go. We, we put our armor down. That's the kind of community you want to build. Do that and see what comes up and what stops you from letting yourself right. fully express. Fire. Speaking of masterminds. Speaking of masterminds, like the Samantha Skelly one, we have every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, a next level mastermind. So if you're listening this, to this, it's Monday. Tonight. Tonight. We're going to have one. And tonight's is the top 10 things you need to know about money. Not true. No, that's this. That's that's that's. God, I'm gonna figure this out at some point. <laughs> next level nation, next level university, I have to, I'm next sorry. level masterminds. No, it's okay. We have set up this business model to be. Not only are we a mentor in your pocket, but we also want to be a mentor in your real life. Come join us at these masterminds. They're absolute fire. I love meeting you. Kevin does too. You get to meet Amy, Tiff, Natalie. You get to meet each other. It's just wonderful. Join us. And we are doing a giveaway up until December 1st. All you have to do to be entered is leave a review on the podcast app. You can either leave a five-star review or you can write a review and you will be entered into the sweepstakes to win one of five $50 Amazon gift cards. We'll send those out December 1st. You can do something nice for the holidays. Again, the more reviews we have the more people will look and say, oh, wow, there's a bunch of people that like this. There's a bunch of people that trust these guys. They've learned something. So it's far more likely that we're able to help more people. We want 2021 to be the year of Next Level University. 2020 was an amazing year. We're not done yet. Right. But every year we're going to try to grow, and the more we grow, the more we can help. And uh, that's always the goal is to give back to you guys. We, without you, we wouldn't be able to do this. Mm. We don't have fans. We have family. And we will see you guys on the next one. Talk to you soon.